Hello, Lovelace, and welcome to today's wider curriculum lesson with our history focus. And our objective today is, can I explain events in the rule of King Alfred the Great? Now, recently we moved on to the Vikings as the main focus of our topic. But King Alfred the Great was an Anglo-Saxon king, which may seem like we're sort of going backwards in time, but we're not. Remember that the Anglo-Saxons were still, still had their settlements in big parts of Britain and England, even when the Vikings invaded. And King Alfred the Great was actually the king of Wessex, which was down on, that, on the south coast and remained an Anglo-Saxon settlement and stronghold throughout the Viking invasion. So although we are looking at an Anglo-Saxon character today, it's very much during the time of the Vikings. Okay, so we haven't slipped back in time. We are still talking about the, the, Vi the period of time when the Vikings invaded, but we're going to focus on an Anglo-Saxon character from that time. Okay, so can I explain events in the rule of King Alfred the Great? And it's important that you understand the sequence of events, the things that actually happened to Alfred along, along and through his life, as that's what you're tasked today will be all about. So the year is 871 AD. Ethelred, King of Wessex, has died fighting the Viking invaders and the nobility must decide who the next king should be. So we know from our lessons that the nobility are the kings, obviously he's, he's dead, but also the other senior people and wealthy people within the court. These are the people who make the decisions. So when the king had died, it was up to them to decide who would take the throne. Okay? Sometimes it's very straightforward. But other times it's not quite so obvious and a decision has to be made. And you'll understand why they had a difficult decision in a moment. My lords, Ethelred is dead and we are still at war with the Viking invaders. We must choose a new king quickly. I propose Ethelred's eldest son, Athelward. He's the obvious choice. But Athelward is young, no more than a boy. We're at war. We need a grown man to lead us. So you can see there's, there is confusion. Now, normally within a royal family, it would be the eldest child who takes to the throne. In those days, it would be the eldest son. So Athelward is the obvious choice, but he is still a boy and the, the kingdom is in dire, dire need of a leader. Okay? Now, recently, there was a change in the law whereby it is the eldest child who takes to the throne. If you look at our royal family, it's the eldest child, whether that's male or female. But in those days, it was absolutely, it was the uh, eldest boy of the current king who took to the throne. But the nobles, they are and say they are arguing, they're discussing the fact that Athelward simply isn't ready to take on this role. Even if it is his birthright, even if he is entitled, he's simply not fit for the job at the moment. He is still a child. So the argument continued. Well, so say we need a grown man to lead us. And who, my lord, would you suggest? Alfred, Athelred's brother. Okay, so we're still keeping it in the family. The throne remains in Athelred's family, but they are suggesting his brother as opposed to his son. Oh, not Alfred. Alfred's weak. He's always ill. He won't survive. So there's doubts about uh, Alfred's character about his ability to take the throne. It is true that Alfred is often ill, but he's not weak. Alfred is not a true warrior. He would prefer to spend his time reading books than preparing for battle. We must have kings who can read as well as lead us into battle. Our new king should be Alfred. Okay, so you can see the argument there is Whilst it's important to have a king who can lead into battle, you're not going to spend your entire time at battle. So kings need to have 
need to be multi-talented. In this case, they need an intelligent, learned king who can read, who is well-educated, who can deal with lots of situations apart from just the battlefield. Okay? So he was putting forward a really strong case for Alfred to take on the throne, despite being not the greatest of warriors. He had a lot of other skills and other things that he could bring to the, bring to the crown. So Alfred was named king. Now, Alfred was in his early 20s when he became king, so he was still very young. And it was true, he was often ill, but he certainly wasn't weak. And they're two very different things. His greatest challenge came from the Vikings who'd invaded in the north and were moving south. Now, we know from our work on the Vikings that they, uh, they landed on the east coast of England and gradually just spread, settling, invading, raiding throughout England. But when they reached Wessex, when they reached the south of England and the kingdom of Wessex, well, they were in for a little bit of a shock because Alfred was not only brave, but incredibly clever. And he came up with a plan. King Alfred, the Vikings are advancing again. We cannot beat them. They're stronger than us. They have better weapons. We're outnumbered. Time. If only we had a bit more time to gather our strength. We just need a bit more time. Alfred realised that with time, he could prepare. He could get his people uh, uh, weapons, get them trained, get them prepared for battle. But at the moment, they simply weren't in that, that situation. The people weren't ready to fight. The, the people didn't have sufficient armaments and training and everything they would have needed to go into battle. So he needed time to prepare. But how was he going to create this time? How was he going to keep the wolf from the door? How was he going to stop the Vikings from invading his kingdom? Well, he had a plan. To give himself time, Alfred cleverly made a deal with the Vikings. He gave them money in return for not attacking. And they call the money Danegeld. The Vikings left Wessex in peace for a while. But then in 878 AD, the Viking leader, Guthrum, launched a surprise attack on Alfred. Okay, so the Danegeld, this payment, had given them some time. It had given them the opportunity to at least start to prepare for battle. Now, because of the surprise attack, they still weren't quite ready. Guthrum attacked before Alfred was completely prepared. So, so it wasn't say so it wasn't a case of right we're all ready let's take them on say so they weren't ready just yet but it had given them some time to start the preparations now because they weren't ready and because of this surprise attack alfred was forced to flee his advisors despite him wanting to stand and fight his advisors told him and a small group of his followers to run so they went into hiding. They headed out into the towns and villages and he hid in a small village surrounded by marshes, out of the way of anyone and anything. Alfred was disguised as a poor man. So the people living in that village had no idea he was the king. And he just said they just got on with their lives. Now there is a legend, there is a story that Alfred, whilst hiding out in an old woman's house, was asked to look after the oven, was asked to look after the cake, the, uh, the cakes that she put on, on the oven to bake. And his mind was elsewhere. He was busy planning how he was going to defeat the Vikings. He was uh, planning his battle plans and so on. And so his mind certainly wasn't on the cakes. And they burnt. He forgot all about them. Uh, and the old woman returned to give him an absolute tongue lashing really, really told him off. So it was quite clear that she did not know who she was talking to. If she'd have realised that this was her king, I don't think she would have told him off in the way that she did. 
Well, just a little story uh, just highlights the, fa uh, the idea that Alfred was in hiding and was, and say, his mind was elsewhere. He was desperately trying to figure out a way of getting his kingdom back. So after much planning, Alfred was ready. He was ready to leave the marshes. He took off his disguise and he dressed once more as a king. And the people were ready. The people were prepared. The people had taken to arms. And from all over Wessex, people came and they joined him. They were ready to fight the Vikings. And you can see here in this image, the weapons and the armament that we've, we've talked about, both through our Anglo-Saxon and Viking topic. We've got the, two, the long two-handed spears that gave incredible length and reach when fighting. We've got the shields, some of these longer spears coming over the shoulder. So you can see how the person behind uh, used the spear and the person in front protected them and moved forward in battle. We can see the different styles of helmet, the chain mail protecting the neck, the face guard protecting the nose and round the eyes. We've got the banners showing which tribe, which group this particular battle formation is from. Okay, so they went to battle. Alfred and his men headed into battle against the Vikings. The Vikings were far better armed. They had far more soldiers. They were better trained. Everything was going for them. And soon after that initial meeting for the Battle of Eddington, Alfred and his Anglo-Saxon army actually defeated the Vikings. They beat them. And many people believe it was simply a case of they wanted it more. They wanted their kingdom back. They had more to lose. They had more to fight for. So they were far, far more aggressive for battle, a fighting force. And Guthrum, the Viking leader, he promised he would never attack Wessex again. And in return, Alfred gave the Vikings land to the east of Britain, which became known as Danelaw. Okay. Now, the reality is that although uh, Alfred did, did win the Battle of Eddington and did protect and save the Kingdom of Wessex, his armies simply weren't strong enough to push the, the Vikings all the way back and out of Britain. And he recognized that. He realized he didn't have the power to actually push the Vikings all the way out of Britain. So he came up with the compromise. He realized that he could protect his own kingdom and Wessex would remain safe. But he needed to give the Vikings something in return. And he gave he gave them lands in the east of England. So they maintain their settlements, and they, they could settle down and hopefully maintain some level of peace. Now, that peace wasn't going to last. There were constant skirmishes between the Vikings and Anglo-Saxons. But for the time being, at least, uh, Alfred had managed to defeat and push back the Vikings and in turn protect his own kingdom of Wessex. So here he is, King Alfred the Great, and he may have been ill. He was quite a sickly man, so he may have been ill for much of his life, but he is remembered as one of the strongest kings to go nose to nose with the Vikings, with a huge invading Viking force. And he was able to stand toe to toe with these warriors and beat them. He's still the only English king to have been given the title, the Great. So, your challenge, your task, hopefully, so you're going to be able to recall many of the events that took place in Alfred's life. And if you can't, please do rewind and rewatch some of the video. But I'd like you to create a comic strip. I want you to identify six key moments from Alfred's life. Any six you like. And I'd like you to illustrate those. I would like you to draw an image 
that uh, represents that particular moment. And then do just a little, a brief bit of writing to go with it. So, as it's six key moments, you need to create six boxes. Okay, now this could be a single sheet of paper that you fold to create six boxes, or you might choose to do two or three on each page uh, and build it up that way. I really don't mind. It all depends on what paper you've got available to you. And I appreciate everybody is doing their best uh, to use whatever paper they can find. But as I say, if you've got a single large sheet of paper that you can fold, then you can fold it to look like that. Or you can do it over a number of smaller pieces of paper. That's fine. But we need six, six boxes. And in each one, I want it to contain a picture and just a brief description of the event. You might choose to include speech bubbles as well. But just a little bit of advice, if you're using a speech bubble, write the text first and then draw the speech bubble around it. Because I guarantee if you draw the bubble first, the words won't fit in and it will look all squashed and messy and horrible. So write first and then draw the speech bubble around it. Okay? Whichever six you choose, sequence them in chronological order. So sequence them as they would have happened in Alfred's life. So there's my example for the first one. I thought I might as well start at the beginning when he gets crowned. So in 871, Alfred was made King of Wessex following the death of his brother. So a short caption just to explain what, what was going on. And then an illustration, a picture to go with it. And as I say, you might choose to add a speech bubble to this. So I'm King. I don't know but a picture and a piece of text, okay? And then you might go on. Your next one might be uh, the idea that the Vikings are on the way. So you, you could have uh, someone from the palace coming and telling him, the Vikings are coming, what shall we do? And it could, then you could, things like Dangel, when he actually gives money to the Vikings to stay away, and so on. You're up to you. I'm not going to give you all the answers. It's up to you which six you choose to record and represent in your boxes okay so there's your task there's your challenge for today can i create a comic strip with six key moments from alfred's life okay. there's your task okay so that's the end of today enjoy doing that enjoy doing a little bit of artwork please use pencil for your drawings guys not pens or felt tips or anything Nice pencil drawings. Add colour if you like. If you can, that would be fantastic. Uh, but let's have some really nice bits of art, please. So that's the end of today. Stay safe. Look after those around you. And I will see you all soon. Take care.